You've joined us in Starting Up. We promised you a special this week and so we bring to you one of the most outspoken voices on the Silicon Valley. We're talking about technology columnist Vivek Vadva. Here he is in an exclusive chat with our very own Sudhir Sia. Columnist, academician and entrepreneur Vivek Vadva is one of the thought leaders in the Silicon Valley. Formerly an entrepreneur with two successful exits, Wadwa is today a columnist for both the Washington Post and Business Week. He's also a researcher with multiple universities including Stanford and Harvard and is the Vice President of Innovation at the High Tech Singularity University. We caught up with him and started the interview by asking him to take us through the evolution of his career. Vivek used to be an IT guy. Literally, I started off like uh, half the people in the tech world in Bangalore. I started off as a computer programmer. Sure. And um, I worked my way up uh, through the ranks, became a programmer, system analyst, right. project manager. Right. So, um, and then I developed some technology which was extremely, uh, uh, revolu I mean, very revolutionary for its time. It was, uh, it was a way of automatically generating systems for client server uh, in 1980. So it was ahead of its time. So much it led to the creation of a startup company. IBM came to first Boston and seeded the creation of a new startup company, sure. and I became an accidental entrepreneur. Right, right. So started the company in 1990, took it public in 1995, right. spectacular success. Right. Exited and started my second company in 1997, right. spectacular success. Uh, what was the second company? Uh, Relativity Technologies. Okay. Until the dot-com bubble burst. Right. I miscalculated, the company got in trouble. I fixed it, and then I got in trouble. I got heart I had a heart attack, okay, I'm and sorry. that was my life-changing event. You, you realize that colonists have less heart attacks as compared to entrepreneurs. <laughs> <laughs> well, in my new life, it's not the same stress anymore. I mean, sure. uh, so, Vivek, I just want to go back to the valley, and obviously, right. you lived a number of your years there, right? Uh, what what we are seeing in the valley is the rumors of this oncoming of the second dot-com bubble, right? Be it with yeah. the LinkedIn IPO no, or the Groupon a, there's IPO. There's a social media bubble. Okay. This Groupon is, a, I mean, Groupon is a scam. Okay. I mean, you know, you know, you have your scams in India. You have this bubble in India. Company which is totally worthless, which was about to go bankrupt. So you have the investment banks. You know, investment banks really are the robber barons of America. That they they have enough clout in government. You know, you have corruption over here, which is one type. You have corruption in America, but another type. Capitalist it's, corruption. It's capitalist corruption. It's investment banks now having control. You know, giving. You know, for, you know, it's what you call contributions to government officials and, and having the lobbyists work on them. Sure. So they basically uh, have rigged the system right. so that they can have these inflated IPOs and right. ridiculous scams. So six months from now, right. when the inside of the sold, the investment banks have made the money, the process of Groupon is going to drop dramatically sure. and the public are going to left holding the bag. So this is a bubble. Right. And, and LinkedIn is a good company, but it's not worth, you know, nine billion, nine billion dollars. It's a good billion dollar company. But Vic, yeah. would you would have to argue that while the dot-com bubble was one where every company was being highly valued, here it's one or two or three or four companies, companies that are leaders in this space that are getting a high valuation. It's one, one market segment, which is, but sure. the trouble is that when this bubble bursts, right. the public is going to blame the entire tech se sector. They're okay. not going to say okay. it was a social media. It was media. not Dropbox or it was this or it was, they're going to blame everything. Exactly. I mean, right. Dropbox is a good company. Okay? Right. I mean, um, uh, Evernote is a great company. There are a number of great companies out sure, there, sure. which should be going out going public, but I, all the attention is being taken by this cadre of uh, inflated uh, valuations. Sure. It's going to hurt the entire ecosystem of Silicon Valley. One big point of debate right now in the, in the Valley is the start up visa, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm sure Vivek Wadwa has a number of, of opinions on it. What, what do you think is going against it? Well, uh, here's the problem that right. um, you have 10, 12 million illegal immigrants in America, sure. Hispanics, right? right? And then you have a million legal immigrants who are stuck in immigration limbo. Right. Now, uh, everyone agrees we need these skilled immigrants because, you know, the, uh, I mean, a third of those million are Indians, about 350,000, maybe even 400,000 are Indians, right? Right, right? Highly skilled. Right. A quarter of a million are Chinese, okay, right. highly skilled. Right. Everyone wants these people right. because they create jobs. Unskilled, you know, they're good for America, but they uh, came illegally. Mm -hmm. So there are ugly battles brewing about the unskilled. So now uh, President Obama, he basically is trying to pander to both sides. He wants the money from Silicon Valley. Mm -hmm. He wants the votes from the Hispanics. Sure, sure. So he says, I'll fix immigration if you give me, if I can get this comprehensive immigration reform through. Right. Which means that unless you, you know, fix the problem with the illegals, they won't fix the problem with the legals. So right. what's happening is that the legals are getting fed up. So what's happening right now is that there's a reverse outflow. People are coming back here sure. like never before, and they're fertilizing this right. this the economic the, the ecosystem over here. And they're doing wonders for India. Vivek, you spoke about uh, India versus the Valley, right? Yeah. And you spoke about the breadth of entrepreneurs you've seen over here uh, on your trip. Uh, what do you think Indian entrepreneurs can learn from entrepreneurs in the Valley? There's, there's a lot ways? to be learned. These entrepreneurs are in trouble. Sure. Even though 
Um, uh, the land is more fertile here. They're not getting the, they're not getting fed. They're not getting water here. There's no mentorship happening here. There's very little mentorship happening here. When one entrepreneur here, out of the 300 or so people I've met, who has been helped by uh, the, the uh, leaders heads. of the of the IT revolution, okay. which is bad. Sure. sure. Okay. Which is a big big problem. Sure. Silicon Valley. The difference over here is that when you succeed, you start giving back to everyone. Okay. And if you compare the entrepreneurs in India and the valley, apart from the ecosystem, uh, what else is the difference? Uh, it's the same. You know, this is the Desi mindset right. that you learn how to make do, you learn how to deal with sure. problems. But access to talent is much easier in the valley. Would you agree with that? Uh, not necessarily. Okay. I tell you, uh, um, um, I mean, uh, there are a lot of great people over here. You see, what you have to realize one thing here: sure. the, the advantage that Bangalore has over Silicon Valley. Sure. You have a massive IT outsourcing industry. Right. The people who joined it are getting fed up of working for their white masters. Okay? Right, right. They've been working for 10 to 15 years for these companies, cleaning up the junk okay. from the uh, you know, junk for Western companies. Now they're well off, they're, they're educated, they're you know, experienced. They're saying, well, why do we need to keep doing this? So that entire pool of talent in the IT outsourcing industry is available to the product industry. Right. Now, the product industry so far hasn't had critical mass, hasn't had the billion dollar exits. You have a few successes over here, and I tell you, these people in the uh, IT outsourcing industry are going to be jumping ship to start companies over. I mean, they, this is going to be the excitement like so, you have never seen before. So you before. see a lot of product entrepreneurs coming from the services sector here? They're, 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 a lot of the people here are coming from that services sector. Sure. But so far, it's a trickle. Right, right. Let these people succeed. Let you know this bubble. Let we want a bubble over here. Frankly, I sure. mean, I've been critical about bubbles, but we want a bubble here in Bangalore with ridiculous valuations. We want you know a few more billion dollar IPOs, and I'll tell you, um, uh, we're going to take the best talent from the services industry and now turn them into productive people who are going to develop products that are going to change not only India but the world. Drop out Which sectors do you see the next wave happening here in India? Uh, it'll be education. It'll be it'll be medicine. Okay. It, you know, all these technologies are converging. Sure. Robotics, AI. Yeah. Right. All these technologies are converging. You know, this Apple Siri sure. is AI and voice recognition. Absolutely. Right? All software based. Right. Well, Bangalore does software. They they do sophisticated software. Sure. So it has a huge advantage over Silicon Valley. And if there were three things that you'd like to see here in the Indian startup landscape to build the ecosystem, what would they be, Vivek? Mentoring, uh, seed financing, mentoring. Vivek, finally, um, from someone who's met some of the best entrepreneurs and interviewed them and written uh, some of the most thought-provoking articles on this subject, what's your advice to the Indian entrepreneur watching the show? Team up with others who've done it before and take the risk. That uh, be, be ready for failure, but uh, you can change the world.